So hi, welcome to the Good Nerds Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... I'm Marcos. I'm Kevin. And we're Cicada. And we're going to ask him some questions today. I'm going to start. Uh, so what inspired you guys to start the band, and what does the band name mean? Um, you want to go? Uh, no, you start. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I what inspired us, I don't know. We've been playing for together... Me and Marcus have been playing for many years, like 10 plus years. I mean, we've just been trying out different sounds for a long time. Mm-hmm. And when we really got into like Sonic Youth, because we never really changed our like perspective on writing and making music. So mm-hmm. it was really Sonic Youth that really made us try different tunings and like play more of aggressive kind of music, you know. Mm-hmm. And then Shoegaze brought us to a different point. We started to calm down a little bit more. Yeah. And then we kind of combine the two into what we do now kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And the band name. Uh, so Cicada, it's a kind of an amalgamation of Spanish and English. Obviously Cicada is the bug. Mm-hmm. And we used, to, we used to have a band called Humbug. And we always thought that was kind of like funny or like mm-hmm. silly, but like we didn't really like it because it was too jokey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like Cicada was, because uh, in Spanish, if you say Cicaida, which means to fall, mm-hmm. And we use that as a play on kind of play on word cicada to fall kind of something like that. That's what we came up with that. That's so cool. I love that a lot. I really, really <laughs> yeah. like that. That's sick, right? Uh, so congratulations on your newest release, your self-titled. How do you feel the response to it so far? You, Marcos. <laughs> well, um, really liked a lot of the things that people wrote about it. We could you know nod our heads to because like we're glad like a lot of the what we're trying to communicate sonically people mm-hmm. were understanding that's good people were understanding they were trying to get like more of like a dark edge to like our music as opposed mm-hmm. to like our first ep and our first ep kind of had like a lot of like kind of like nostalgic useful kind of sounds kind of jangly mm-hmm. and then uh we just wanted to go like a little we wanted to go heavier deeper and uh, yeah, the reception to that was people understood that like this was the direction we we're going. We're not necessarily yeah. just to just go label this. Oh, this is just shoegaze again. Like mm-hmm. not really a lot of just like simple shoegaze label was put onto the record, which was pretty good. I like kind of like how it was that way. Yeah. 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 Um, exactly. Like I uh, just enjoyed the, that element of it where people that were reviewing it or even people that sent us messages where it's like you know what this is so this is different but we really like what you're doing and like we really like the heavier side to what you guys are bringing and that's what we always wanted to do we always really wanted to go heavier mm-hmm. but we were always I guess kind of uh apprehensive about it yeah. because yeah. we played shoegaze the shoegaze community is very very narrow yeah they want to hear they want to hear wah, wah, wah. that's it that's all they want to hear <laughs> over and over again forever mm-hmm. yeah so it was like it was a little bit of a stab in the dark, but it's been good. People really enjoy it. Yeah. Right. I'm so happy people like welcomed it with open arms instead of being like, no, this is wrong. I'm like <laughs> casting you out. So I'm happy you guys have been getting good response to it. That's good. Some some people have. Some people have been like that. So. <gasps> Are you serious? <laughs> some people in the shoegaze community, is they're they're so they're so narrow. Some well, you know, people. Yeah. It's, it's just it's, how it is. Exactly. Exactly. What can you do? It. What can yeah. you do? Uh, so what made you guys choose Deeper In as your lead single for the EP? Uh, I, Deeper In was like probably one of the first songs we started working on whenever we just started to come up with these songs. Uh, for me, it was a personal song. It's just about my relationship and like uh, I felt about it in certain ways and stuff like that. And we felt that it was probably the most powerful song as in like our aesthetic change. Yeah. We liked sometimes feels more, but deeper in was just like it had an element to it that we felt was interesting, like darker, mm-hmm. a little more edgier, a little like a little eerie. Mm-hmm. And that's why we did the music video too for it. So that's what that's why we put that as the lead. Okay. okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the EP name or cover art? I know it's self titled. Is there a reason why you went with a self titled rather than just kind of like any name or? Uh... I mean, self-title is more of kind of just like a way to distinguish the two records, right? EP1, mm-hmm. we called Stone because it was just like, 
you know, we're just like laying the seeds for what we were going to do in the future, basically. And yeah. then Cicada was kind of just like, I don't know if you consider like sown as something like the, I don't know, like the, the, the practice basically before that actually thing starts. Mm-hmm. So Cicada was more of like point zero, I guess, like this is where we're starting from now. Yeah. Kind of the other things in the past kind of thing. So we're just going to base it off just the name. Oh, okay. Band, just get the essence of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like this is the type of music we're now going to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, the cover art. Oh, the cover art. Uh, it was just like we were messing around with photography because we both always liked photography, but we never mm-hmm. really like, we never really got into it because I don't know. I guess just so many things in your mind and before we had school and shit, but like, uh, we really wanted to try something different with our own sense of how we how we see things and stuff like that. And I remember seeing like an interesting place in my garage where it was just like a chimney. And this place is really old. It's like mm-hmm. probably like a hundred years old. I don't know. It's an old ass chimney. Oh wow! <laughs> and like it was just a, there's just a hole there. Yeah. That was just like rusted up and stuff like that. And I was like, that looks like a gateway into something. That looks like that looks like what like you're going somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And then I put a mirror beside it uh, underneath it. And it reflected it. So then all you see is a reflection of the hole in the reflection of the hole. And it kind of looked like different dimensions. Hmm. And then Marcos is like, oh, we could use this cube that we have, that I have, that has mirrors on it. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like how it turned out. It kind of like gave the essence of uh, kind of like longing. And like, mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of confusing at the same time. Like, I feel like it's like an amalgamation of feelings. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see the sad face or like the looking the staring blankly face uh, the weird textures and it's just like an interesting piece we found we basically wanted to like show that we're we have our own artistic side when it comes to our covers as well yeah oh. that's sick uh so can you tell me a little bit about your writing process for the cp you want to go more closer <laughs> yeah sure um well for the ep it basically started with after EP1, Kevin started writing more heavier, darker music, but it wasn't like super heavy. We don't really drop tunings. We just mm-hmm. make it sound heavier somehow. I don't know how it just happens. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he started, yeah, exactly. He started writing heavier stuff. And the immediate thing that came to my mind was like, sweet. I like this because yeah. like I was really getting into like death tones at the time. As you should. So I was like, sweet. <laughs> this is, I like how this is sounding. And then like that just kind of like, got me excited to really start writing that type of music too so Kevin would have like one or two songs like basically ready and like finished and then we I would like start writing guitars for them Mm -hmm. and I was really heavily influenced by like obviously Deftones but like as things were progressing I was getting more influenced by like I don't know like shoegazy kind of like metal yeah that I like just like find on like Spotify so not necessarily like the bigger bands like and um really influenced by like stuff like Killing Joke so I wanted to kind of kind of this like eerie kind of like dystopian kind of like sounds to my guitar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that, that was definitely deeper in. Like every time I think about deeper in that EP, I'm always just like killing joke, killing joke. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then like the other songs, it just like, it was just basically came to fruition from just like that, like metal influence, wanting to get heavier, darker, see where that'd go. Mm-hmm. And then from there, when we have the guitars ready, it kind of just it goes to the, the rhythms and then uh, the other guys take care of the rhythms. We, we write with them. We kind of like direct the whole thing, kind of like orchestrate it. And uh, yeah, and when everything was finished, we had basically like a basic demo with some of Kevin's vocals and then COVID happened. So we had a lot of time to kind of sit down with it and mm-hmm. like enhance everything. And yeah. a lot of things changed like really dramatically. Like the last yeah. song stuck, like the bass is different the guitar ended up totally different a lot of things ended up really different kevin singing completely different like mm-hmm. if ever the demos are released it's going to be very very strange listening to those demos kevin singing because it's just totally it's totally awful. different it's awful you <laughs> could say it's awful <laughs> they were bad no they were really bad because like i didn't know what i was doing at that point i was just yeah. like kind of messing around <laughs> and we're like we're going to the studio in like a, a couple weeks basically mm-hmm. before covid really locked us down and then I was like, I wasn't really confident in it, but then the lockdown happened. So then I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to try totally different things. And I, and I thought I did a pretty good job on the vocals in the EP too. And yeah. they've just been, they just been getting better from there. I feel like. 
That's awesome. Oh yeah. Wait, wait. So you mentioned <clears throat> sorry. So you mentioned the um the demos. Will you be dropping the demos? Because you said when we drop the demos, they're gonna sound like completely different. Oh, if we ever drop the demos, if, then oh. if, 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 you missed it. We, we we had it we had it on Bandcamp as a as a hidden track. For a little uh-huh. bit, but then we yeah. have it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, fine. Uh, so can you tell me where Headspace was at while you were creating this record? Um, I guess most of these songs come from a place of like being unsure of the future. Mm. Uh, I think I think a lot of the lyrics really reflect that. Besides Deeper In, Deeper In was more is probably the most grounded, which is weird because it's the most like eerie sounding song. Yeah. Like the other tracks are more about just like being unsure of your future in general. I guess our future and the macrocosm of things, like you know, especially being uh, a person of color, you feel sometimes that things are a lot more difficult. Yeah. Uh, to deal with and like people are a lot more critical of you, and that mm-hmm. that's reflected in like the song Drowning, where it was kind of the. Uh, I was coming from a position where it's kind of just like you feel sometimes that it's just it's too much sometimes yeah and that's where most of the songs came from in that kind of direction mm. i completely mm-hmm. get that all right uh so this question should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe the cp for new listeners in three words no more no less both of you have to do it heavy uh, energetic okay uh livid Ooh. okay uh i'm gonna put hmm mm-hmm. kind of obscure okay uh maybe eerie mm-hmm. and uh jarring Ooh, those okay. are good. all right well done well done uh so is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this ep to invoke in your listeners um, I guess what I really want is to people for people to relate, uh, just relate in a way that, in their own way too, not necessarily only in the way that I feel. Like I want them to be able to listen to the song and be like, "That's explaining how I feel," even if it's not completely what I'm saying. Like I remember someone messaged us saying how like, "Oh, this really helped. This really helped me a lot because uh, I'm dealing with this specifically." And I'm like, "That's not really what the song is about," but I'm really happy that they felt that way. Yeah, that they, they got that from the song, and that's that's what mostly what I want from people listening to our music. Mm-hmm. Oh, hmm. all right. Uh, so where do you guys see the band in the next five years? <laughs> you okay? Five years, jeez. Yeah, it's yeah. a long time. Yeah, is careers class or what's going on now? It's a job interview. <laughs> yeah, a job interview. Yeah. <laughs> it's life or death right here. Yep. Yeah uh we're done five years that's it <gasps> the that band. Band route. oh my god <laughs> put out a couple of good albums and then calling it quits done yeah. e- mm-hmm. ep number five yep yeah. uh i guess for me in five years uh where i see us is being a pretty pretty frequently touring band okay uh we're getting that started already uh but then covid obviously happened and like yeah uh, the scene basically died with that, Ugh, and yeah. Like, and like, and especially right now in Toronto, it's like, it's it's a little bit, it's a little bit unsure. There's a little bit of there's a lot of unsurety is going on. That's mm-hmm. a word, but yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> in five <laughs> years, I, in five years, I see us, I see us just being more frequently touring, basically. That's good. Oh, I thought five you were gonna years. add something. I'm sorry. Okay. No, yeah, five years. Let's say uh, album two, LP two, not LP two. Yeah, yeah. LP okay. Two, yeah. Okay. Second so LP. full length. Yeah, yeah, the second one. The second. All right. One. The second one. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so for the last couple of questions, we're actually gonna shift away from music, if that's okay with you guys. Yep. Yeah. Six. Cool. We're gonna go straight to death row. Boom. So <laughs> if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? <laughs> uh Shoot. cheesy gordita crunch oh okay. uh, with the vanilla coke Ooh, all right. all right all right i've never had vanilla coke but i've heard it really yeah yeah sounds good sounds good it's is it like good. a cream soda i guess i guess kind of but like at the same time it's like ice cream mm-hmm. uh with that like very very potent coke flavor so 
Okay. Okay. I might. All right. I might try it. I try it. Uh, for me, probably just be good old fashioned Canada Dry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ginger Taste. ale and uh, probably just like my dad's barbecue or something, which is Aww. just like sausage, <laughs> some beef, and then some like yuca root. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Taste. All right. Uh, so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? Fictional world? Yes. Fictional world. Uh, the Warhammer 40k world. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shoot. I don't know. Middle Earth. Right. Middle Earth, yeah. yeah. Both good answers. <laughs> yeah. Dang. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person we've spoken to has actually said it is the most important question. You get it. What is your favorite color? Red. Ooh. Do you have a specific shade of red? Uh, kind of like a velvety kind of red. I don't know. I don't know the names, but like a velvety kind of red. Yeah, oh. that's good. Uh, I don't have a favorite color. I thought I did. <laughs> I thought it was nah. orange. I thought that's it was the, black at one point. I don't know. That's the only answer we don't accept on here. Yeah. Gun to your head. Yeah. You gotta choose one. You gotta, you gotta give us a color. <laughs> you can just make one up. Okay. We're not letting okay. this in. My favorite color today on the june the 2nd 2021 is uh brown there you go brown <laughs> do you have a specific shade of brown <laughs> yes. brown no the color, of my, the color of my hair okay okay right. okay All right. good. My favorite good. color today that's good all right so, i'll take that as glory said that's all the questions you have today is there anything that you guys would like to plug i guess what we can say kind of like you know like a kind of like announcement, I guess. I don't know. It would be like, uh, we have two singles that are going to be coming out before the end of summer. All right. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be formed a different way, not necessarily two singles. They're kind of, they're going to kind of be together. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, is that it? I think that, is that it, Marcos? Uh, just the singles and uh, we'll have some like online kind of like showcases. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're having some online shows. Yeah, after like a year of not playing live. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Solid. Wait, when you say you have two singles coming out and they're kind of together, are you saying they're going to be packaged together, like dropped at the same time, or are they going to be like the same song, but just kind of like cut in the middle? You know, like how Green Day did on um, American Idiot with yeah. like two songs. Is it going to be like that, or is it just two songs dropped at the same time? We're going we're gonna to separate the drops. Okay. But uh, they're, they're interconnected. Like they... Uh, interchangeable as names okay. and also interchangeable in meaning kind of like that and like we wanted them to be kind of like a vignette a mm-hmm. little bit of a vignette kind of thing okay uh with an instrumental track hmm. and uh yeah so it's like it's like we don't want to call it an ep because it's not enough songs but yeah it's kind of like a topic we feel is important and we just want to say what we want to say and that's basically it okay right. thank you i was just curious <laughs> that's uh, all right yeah. well thank you for now this guy's been cicada and uh we're the good noise podcast